Welcome to the InfoSec Career Video Series. This series of short videos will provide a brief look inside cybersecurity careers and the experience needed to enter them. Today, I'll be speaking with InfoSec Skills author, Steve Allen, about the role of industrial security control security practitioner. So let's get into it. Welcome, Steve. Welcome. Uh, so Steve, let's start with the basics. What is an industrial control system and what specifically does an ICS security practitioner do? What are the day-to-day -day tasks involved? Well, if you look at industrial control systems, they're like 95% of all the computers we have out there. Yeah. They're the, they're the things that control the nuclear power plants and their power grid and our water supply systems and our pipelines and our sewer systems, everything, literally everything yep. is an industrial control system. Now, what a security practitioner would do is try to make sure that the bad guys can't get in. Uh, if you look at cyber war nowadays, one of the big things that uh, these nation states want to do to each other, uh, if they ever get in a war, is to try to take down things like the power grid and stop a lot of that stuff. So really what you're going to do on a day-to-day -day task is make sure that that is secure, make sure that there's uh, no... Um, basically bad guys getting in. We had a situation about uh, about a year or so ago where somebody got into a water supply system. In yep, Old Bar, Florida. In, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was lucky a guy watched, seen it happen at the time yes. and was able to stop it. Yeah. But if he hadn't, there would have been a lot more sodium hydroxide thrown into the water supply. Yes. Yeah, that's a that's a scary one. We've talked about that on the Cyberwork podcast a number of times, and, and it's it really sort of brings home the importance of this particular, yes. uh, again, because it's so, it, one, it's so uh, ubiquitous in terms of all of the sort of computer networks we have. And two, like, there's so many reports out there that a lot of these security systems are so underprotected. And there's the one thing that really comes in life and limb yeah. uh, controlling things. So Yes, yeah, yeah. You're literally talking about, like, the day-to-day -day workings of society. <laughs> right. So uh, how does one become an ICS security practitioner? I, I, I'm assuming this isn't an entry-level position, but are there entry-level versions of it? Do you need experience first? There can be. Uh, you can Generally, the people that get into this start usually from a networking background. You learn okay. networking first because most of your security uh, in an ICS system oftentimes comes from physical security and also your network security because the devices themselves have very little uh, security built into them. Yes. Uh, Congress just passed a, a law last year that says, hey, we're not gonna buy any more security equipment unless it has secure, I mean, ICS equipment, unless it has security built into it. Got it. And that's a very good start. Yeah. Yeah, and also, uh, yeah, but but that, that also means that you're gonna have to worry about uh, uh, sort of working with the stuff that's, that's in place and is not being replaced, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. typically in IT or, you know, our cycling of mm -hmm. equipment's about maybe five years. It's multiple decades for mm -hmm. ICS mm -hmm. stuff. And so you're going to end up working with a lot of old technology uh, yeah, and a lot systems. of things where we deal with uh, that don't have security in them. So you have to provide, you know, your job is to provide that security. So yep. as we always talk about in ICS, uh, air gapping is the ultimate solution mm -hmm. uh, for those type of things. Right. But now, that's not what corporate really wants. Corporate wants to be able to talk, talk to systems and, oh, that's usually a very bad idea. <laughs> okay, nice gotcha. Uh, so from a from a learning perspective, what type of education is typically required? Is this a degree type program, experience, certifications? What what, what, do, you, what do you need to know to, to sort of get in? Okay, I, there's not really any um, like a bachelor's degree in this stuff, but there yeah. are programs that will teach you industrial control systems. There okay. are teachers who will teach you, or uh, classes who will teach you how to do like PLCs, programmable ladder logic, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I would think one of the first things I would do if I wanted to head that direction. That's a huge field, so you're never gonna. If you know what, you're never gonna want for a job. Okay, and Good. that is yeah. uh, one one of those things where learn to program mm -hmm. the basics of programming. Uh, even though ladder logic uh, is a very unique language in itself, it's very graphical. Uh, it's very important that you understand the basics of programming uh, if you're going to move that direction. But then I would also learn uh, basic networking. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Great. Uh, so what, uh, so moving to like a soft skill kind of direction, what's, what soft skills does an ICS security practitioner need to do their job well? Same everybody needs in real life, yeah. <laughs> you know, along yeah. with other people. Writing and uh, Writing, yeah. things like that. But also the fact that this stuff you can't postpone. Mm -hmm. This is the mm -hmm. stuff where you can't procrastinate because if you procrastinate, maybe that, that multi-million dollar uh, uh, refinery uh, catches on fire mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. Or, you know, we've seen uh, the skill sets kind of in a lot of stuff go, go away. Uh, Colonial Pipeline, which everybody heard about last year, that pipeline. Oh, yeah. Uh, when that happened, when their main systems got ransomware, it took down their uh, industrial control system, automated systems. Nobody knew how to do it manually. Mm -hmm. So those mm. people had retired or left the company. Wow. So keeping those skills active is also a very important thing. Okay. Um, now, what are some common tools that ICS security practitioners use? Is it a is it a tool heavy position, or are you sort of working with existing machines? Yeah. You're existing with a lot of old machines, things like that. But things okay. like protocol analyzers mm -hmm. are good, so you can see things. But ultimately, ICS relies very heavily on physical security. Okay. So understanding how to keep the bad guys outside yes. is really the big thing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, even sort of skimming through a, like a CISSP book or higher level thing is going to be good in terms of giving you that sort of physical background. Yeah, and again. A lot of the governance of a of an ICS system is very identical to the governance of regular IT stuff, mm -hmm. with the certain caveats that you don't get to patch ICS systems very often mm -hmm. uh, because the patching. A lot of the manufacturers say you patch, we're not supporting it, or the patches mm -hmm. come out very rarely, or the you know if you've got twenty year old devices, they're yeah. not making patches for them anymore. Right, you have to protect them in other ways. So the, I imagine that the, from a soft skill perspective, there's also some problem solving to be done in terms of, you know, you, it's not just put tab A into slot B or whatever, like you're going to have to figure out how to sort of use, you know, gum and band-aids to <laughs> sort of patch exactly. up some of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and a lot of stuff where it's a lot of it's jury rigged together, you know, mm -hmm. with the, the uh, duct tape and bailing wire, because yeah. we're taking all these old devices that were meant to be talking on like RS-232 mm -hmm. uh, networks. And now we're trying to slam them into a TCP IP network mm -hmm. and the protocols don't match as well. So it, it becomes understanding kind of what the protocols are, but understanding good solid knowledge of uh, networking is critical. You said before that uh, ICS security practitioners uh, worth their salt are not going to be uh, lacking for job opportunities, but where, where do they work? Obviously, they work in sort of industrial environments and, and maybe the government sector and so forth, but like what types of uh, job options should they be uh, looking oh, for? With, with 5G everywhere, mm -hmm. everything's going to have connectivity. Cars will have connectivity. Yep. Uh, refineries, uh, power grids. I, I have a good friend who manages the uh, ICS environment for the Bureau of Reclamation here in the Northwest United States. Right. And he says he has 63,000 devices that he has to manage with a small group wow. of people. And it keeps him busy. He was trying to hire me away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <from info Okay. sec. laughs> wow. uh, but, uh, but yeah, I resisted. Uh, but uh, we're glad you're still here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it's the skills, and and in most cases, they are a lot of these places are so, so willing to teach you yes. the skills. Okay. If you have a somewhat of a good background, this is a job that they want people so bad that they'll let you come in entry level and train you. Yeah. I, as, so you can pretty much knock on doors at this point. I mean, for for as you know, I mean, I, what what would you be looking for in terms of like? Uh, you know, uh, an industry, an organization that, you know, they're not going to necessarily have a sign on their door saying like, help, help our, you know, our, our networks could be compromised, you know, so how do you, how, how would you know necessarily which ones to say like, you know, do you need, do you need more people? Is that, is that something? To well, they're always hunting, but it's, it's everything, everything that's, because everything runs, I mean, 95% of the computers in the world run this stuff. Yes. And everybody, IT is the glorified position. Everybody knows IT positions, but very few people know about the OT uh, positions. And there, there's 
That's why I say you'll never want for a job if you learn this technology. I love it. Okay, that's fantastic. So um, one of the things we always get asked about is people who uh, don't want to feel locked into a certain type of a role or whatever. So if you're in ICS and you, you want to try something different, are there other roles that you can pivot out uh, into based on the sort of knowledge and experience that you get as an ICS security practitioner? Well, since the basic knowledge is networking, that's going to be applicable both in OT and IT. Got it. Uh, mm -hmm. The management, the governance, uh, you're going to be a better uh, manager on the OT side if you've managed, you know, on the IT side if you've managed OT, because you have so many more restrictions on the OT side that you're going to have to learn how to get by it. You don't get the patch. Uh, you have to, you know, be much more proactive in how you're going to protect things. Mm -hmm. on that where a lot of times on the ot side it's patch tuesday let's patch this weekend or whatever mm -hmm. you don't get to do that you have to plan stuff out way in advance because refineries just don't want to come down or you know no, people sure. want power people want their natural gas yeah things like that so it takes much more planning so those skills translate very well into the it side okay and I'll, i mean it almost sounds like uh, 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 sort of a harder job within the ICS role, uh, you know, almost like like learning stenography by learning it at twice the speed, and then once you get to like regular speed, it's a it seems like a breeze or something. Is I mean, are, are they comparable in that regard, or is it just? I would I out? would say the big thing is the fact that you don't have the normal tools that we all grow up with uh, in IT. Got you it. don't have those tools, so you have to work around not having those tools. Got to so come up with other strategies. Are, yeah. yeah, you have to come up with other strategies. You have to, be, you know, but you still need to be proactive mm -hmm. and things like that. So I would say, you know, if you wanted to get into it, I would learn programming. I would learn basic networking. I would learn basic IT. Uh, but then they'll understand there's the caveat that you don't get to patch. You don't get to do things like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's this is why they're screaming for people. There's people don't hear yeah. about these jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you just answered my last question, but just to, I'll, I'll ask it anyway. For our listeners who are ready to get started right now, what's something they can do right after this video is over that'll move them towards the goal of being an ICS security practitioner? But it sounds like sounds like start with networking, programming. Networking okay. and programming are the key elements of having to do this. So, and again, shake on the doors. Yeah, shake on the doors because it's so needed. I know that uh, my... Uh, my friend Rich was looking for two people and he's been looking for two people for like the past year. And, and these are like, he's bringing in at like uh, GS level 12, 13 for the government. And that's not an entry level. Yes, uh, type for of, sure. Uh, thing. All right. Well, I know at least more than two people are, are listening to this video right now. So you, you know what you need to do. <laughs> Get yourself started. <laughs> so uh, Steve yeah. Allen, thank you very much for your time and insights today. This was great. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, come, hopefully I'll see some people in our SCADA class that I teach occasionally. Fantastic. Uh, and uh, for all of those of you who are listening and watching, thank you very much. If you'd like to know more about other cybersecurity job roles, please check out the rest of InfoSec Career Video Series. We'll talk to you next time. Bye now. Mm -hmm.